Great stuff. Um, ten minutes for me is practically by the time I've done my opening introduction. Uh, so um, I'll do my best to keep this short. The brilliant thing is actually have a short set of um, uh, slides, um, and which it is, you'll be pleased to know. Um, this is a kind of a variation on the uh, theme that we don't hear. One, I'd like to talk a little bit about what we've been doing and, and how we've evolved it at City and Guilds Kineo, and to reflect uh, that we have an awful lot, I think, to learn from the last two presenters. So fantastic, thank you very much. My colleagues here have been probably writing very clearly and wondering why the hell we aren't going to a farm for a week. Um, and um, no doubt we will be going to a farm for a week. Uh, but um, the, the interesting thing about City and Guilds Kineo is it's an interesting beast. We uh, it was fantastic, very interesting talk right at the beginning, Kim. But what's fascinating is that our world is buried deep in your stats. Uh, we do e-learning, we do digital learning. In Brighton, that's quite a big thing. Um, weirdly, it's about London and Brighton and almost nowhere else. Um, and there's a historical reason why we're all here. Uh, we've all grown very fast, but we're a forgotten industry. Um, and that's what I want to really touch on slightly. Um, we don't get ready-made people. Um, and again, I'll be touching on that later on. So we do have a problem. Anyone who comes to join an e-learning company comes really half-baked. Well, not even half-baked, probably. Uh, those nice little baguettes that you get. You're not even sure if you're going to cook them right, and they're probably going to get there in the end. We have to work very hard at it. The other problem is we're all in a hurry. Uh, we all have clients who want things very quickly. And almost nobody goes into e-learning because they chose when they were 15, 16 years old, I want to go into e-learning. They're all DJs who never quite made it. They're, <laughs> they're all filmmakers who are going to make it. Uh, I was a pop star who was crap. Right, so we all have that sort of uh, way of falling in. Everyone's fallen into our worlds. And interestingly, Weirdly, we don't even know after many, many years of the right way to create e-learning in the first place. So agile and lean and all these sort of approaches uh, have been quite well honed in the software industry, but we're not awfully good at clarifying what we do. So the skills training challenge we have is quite immense because it's always shifting, it's always changing, and we're always following what other people are doing. Sitting Girls Kineo is the worst example of that to some extent because we grew so quickly. Uh, ten years ago, I spun off one of the major companies in, in Brighton, and we formed uh, Kineo, and we grew and grew and grew, and the systems and the processes weren't in place. We just sort of get in there, everyone join in there. And I think uh, now we're actually getting to a nice consolidation point. City and Guilds uh, bought us two years ago, brought a certain degree of stability, which is great because there's no stability in e-learning, I can assure you. Every learning company in the world, or whatever you called it years ago, went bust, maybe even twice. Um, and, uh, but now we're at the stage where things are really booming and it's going. So what we do is we do perhaps more traditional models of learning, and I think we have a lot to learn from in many ways of things I've just been listening to. But what is really interesting is a very flat hierarchy. Teams, we have brought in the teams to separate groups, and they have that sense of working together. But in many respects, we have a sense of making it up as we go along to some extent. The, and that actually creates the dynamism. Um, and, but always we're working to very demanding time frames and time scales. So all of those skills that you're looking at, all the things that the, the marketplace are looking for, Kian, when you're going through it, are exactly what we face. We don't get much maturity in people who join our industry. And again, I'm going to point out how we're going to change that, we hope. But first of all, I just want to say that this talk on scarcity of skills is I am the living proof of that problem. Because as I was thinking of putting together the slides on this one, I thought, well, where would I get one of my graphics designers to do some work? And I know that the, I was never going to get them uh, because they're all working on client work, etc. So this is uh, my illustrations. Uh, so prepare. I don't even know how we click it on. Oh, there we go, yeah. Da, there you go. So, um, digital market 
is booming? Well, essentially, it is booming, but no one in the whole world has any idea who we are still. Um, but it's enormously booming, um, and the growth has been pretty strong. And Brighton is a fantastic place for e-learning. I reckon if you go into any school or, or even any university or establishment around here, most people will not even know what e-learning is, let alone that there are great opportunities throughout the organizations here. So, it's booming, but we've got some clouds in the sky. So watch out for the brilliant bits of mouth changing, just to show the mood. I just want you to look out those characters. They will change. This is animation of its highest degree. <laughs> this is the big problem. We're doing really, really well at the moment. And uh, seemingly, we're doing even better since I sold the company, which uh, I think is slightly worrying. But anyway, uh, but just when you're about to say you're doing really, really well, then suddenly someone comes and goes, oh, I'm not sure about February, I'm not sure about March, and you can just fall straight back down. Sales in our world fluctuate hugely, because mainly what we do is we create custom e-learning solutions. So that means a client comes along and says, I want this, and I want it now. And sometimes you can't do it immediately now, and if you do, you suck up all your staff and you finally find you have to turn things away. It's a very fluctuating business. And that is a big problem because we have to then take in quite a lot of freelancers. But so does everybody else want freelancers? There's Alison over there. And we nick her freelancers and she nicks ours. Um, <laughs> and it's a good, good time to be a freelance in e-learning, everybody, uh, at the moment. But that is, that is our fundamental challenge. The other thing is, these new tools are emerging very quickly now. Um, mainly Steve Jobs' fault, really. Um, we suddenly moved from the world that was very safe for us, Flash programming, and now suddenly we're into HTML in a big way, because it all had to work on an iPhone. And that was a major change to our world. Uh, I, I started doing e-learning when there were still dinosaurs wandering the earth. And in those days, the, sh the change when we moved from DOS to Windows was astonishing. We all were programming in a steady, standard platform. And then, then Flash came on board, well, we can work with that one. And so the skills we needed were really well established. But now we're into a completely new world, and we are in responsive design and HTML. And this is, this is a new world that we're working with. So the skills we need uh, are, are pushing this. You see that the males are slightly dropping there. I don't know, just wanted to check. I put a lot of hours into this drawing. Um, the real problem is there aren't, there isn't a very big pool of e-learning specialists out there, uh, and we do bump up with each other. As I said, it's it's great days to be a freelancer because you can probably pick and choose. And I don't like that project, darling. I think I'll do the other one. Um, and uh, so that does actually mean that we now have to face a lot of challenges as e-learning production people. But my big beef is this one, um, that there are no truly vocational e-learning educational courses out there. And this is really depressing. It's really depressing because I'm entering that twilight of my career when I feel I can give back to the world. And so I thought I could talk to various academic institutions and say, look, I could, I, I, for free, I'll offer my services to do some digital e-learning courses on how to do e-learning. Surely you'd be interested. And I went to one particular university, not in Brighton, guys, so relax, further afield. And I went along and I said, look, I might be thinking of moving to your part of the world. One little major factor would be is, would you like me for nothing, just to deliver a program? I might even be able to give you internships and placements in the center of e-learning in the world. Um, and I sat down with the guys and it had some difficulty trying to get into the interactive media course people. And I sat down and I said, mm, I think we just have to say something to you. Uh, I said, this, they said, um, this course is uh, very conceptual, you realize that. And I thought, this is a conceptual course in interactive media in, in higher education, but when you've got all these computers around, what are you conceptualizing? Aren't you building anything? Are you doing anything? And that's my 
challenge here is we're getting a lot of people who, can, who have great awareness of what digital media can do, but can't do a damn thing because they're studying it academically and they're not actually learning those skills. That means we take on English graduates, we take on journalists, we take on some people who've done media studies. We have to scrabble around for a few people who've done MAs and things like that. But even so, we are doing all the training. And I get frustrated because we're doing all the training that really is done in design schools, is done in all the other courses out there that you've gone through <laughs> when you went through that, but not in our world. No, no, just leave us to it. Now, I kind of understand why, because it's a small world and we're forgotten and we're invisible. Uh, and city and guilds haven't even got to a point in our conversations with them and their family to actually put together a qualification around it all. We might go for some accredited courses or things like that, but there is no qualification out there. And yet in the 1980s, mid-80s, there was a course called Data Solve, which people who are TEFL people, who, who gave up with their work, they came and joined it, and it was brilliant. There were placements, and the whole of our industry was created by that one initiative, and there's been nothing since the 1980s to do so. So I suppose it's a cri de coeur that I'm coming out with here. So what is the answer? Well, that's a skill shortage. What is the answer? Well, let's look at what we're doing. Ooh, look, the cloud's moving. Beautiful animation. And they're smiling. I drew that logo. That's quite impressive. Huh? Anyway. Um, just before the brand police go and tell me I've done something terribly wrong. What we're doing is a number of things. Um, we're, we take on regularly students. So we take on five, I think we're taking on five this year. Um, and next year we are committed to do five apprenticeships now. Um, and that's not surprising since City and Guilds are now the parent company. We are quite rightly getting pressure to do that sort of thing. Um, but we're doing one other initiative at this very moment, which I think is really interesting. We're running conversion program. Well, it's a pilot one we're doing at the moment. And at the moment, I'm training up 10 mature people. And those 10 mature people are in their 30s and 40s. And they're at that moment in life where they want to change their careers. They want to do something. And we're doing them, I'm running them like an evening class in interactive design. And the idea is that we can find out if they're any good without them jumping ship, so it's all very quiet. And they can find out whether they want to be an interactive e-learning designer, which, of course, they never dreamt of doing from the age of 15. So it's a really interesting thing. I'm meeting people at crossroads in their lives. And some of them may be good, some of them may not be. But the brilliant thing is I can get them to put together something on their CV that they never had before. It will be for the benefit, really, of the whole of the Brighton area because inevitably we'll, we'll work with some of them, but many others will spill out and be free and available. So we'd like to do more of that, um, and we're going to see if it works. It's still early days. But that's really what we're trying to do. Uh, so I suppose my talk has been mainly on the challenges rather than the solutions. Thank God you had the other two speakers who've come up with all the solutions. <laughs> but anyway.